Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just remind everyone, 1992, no internet, and the Cold War was just ending. Times have changed, and the original intent of the program is important, but again, today is today. It's not 1992. I just want to make it clear that I'm a strong supporter of the 340B program. It's critical to many of the rural hospitals in my district. I called every CEO of every hospital, and honestly, all of them talked about the critical nature of the program, but also none of them had a problem with more oversight. You know why? Because they're, in, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, and if everyone is out there is following the intent of the program, uh, either original intent or in its current, current goals, then no one, I'll repeat, no one has anything to worry about with increasing oversight of the program, being required to report their activities. And those that are not, honestly, should be ashamed of yourselves, and you know who you are. It's ridiculous. As a provider, the intent of this is to get low-income fellow citizens access to very important, critical, life-saving medications. And so those of you who are opposing more transparency, uh, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. So you can Google that and see what that means. But we know, we know what the reason behind this is, okay? The reason is money. And so we need to get the focus off money and back onto the intent of why this program was put in place, and we've lost that. And it's appalling. Again, I wanna say, people that are fighting against more transparency, in my view, it's shameful. And uh, they need to quit doing that and cooperate with the committee and help us, help us improve the program for everyone. So. Ms. Draper, I mean, the reach has expanded way beyond the, uh, has and has led to the creation of, in my view, a cottage industry almost to maximize the, the profits, including vendors, software developers, consultants, contract pharmacies. Again, I know you've said this, but would you agree that further oversight of entities beyond the program's covered entities is warranted? I would say there should be oversight of all the, all the stakeholders in this program. Agreed. So, so I don't think we have any partisan issue with, with that. Uh, from your perspective, considering the lack of transparency about, these vi about the vendors, is there a potential for program abuse there? Well, I say Third that, party vendors. I would say when things are not transparent or you know, the rules are ambiguous, that there's always at least a lot of interpretation and wide interpretation. So I think it, you know, if you don't have clear, clear roles and responsibilities and rules, then you know, there is a lot to be interpreted. and. It does pose a risk for right. um, potential undesirable effects. Do you know how many third-party administrators there are? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, and does the GAO have any information regarding how much money on average covered entities spend on contract pharmacies and vendors? Because these costs presumably could limit, presumably could limit the amount of care provided to low-income and uninsured patients. We don't have that information. That information, as far as we know, is not available. So it's not transparent, so there's no way to know. And then, then the final thing I'll say is, I think someone mentioned, I think you mentioned, that it's important to have transparency to HRSA. I'm going to argue that it's important to have transparency to the constituents that I represent. The only way that things change is if the people that I represent and every member here represents know what's happening out there. Things don't change, in my view, is if, if a federal agency understands better what's happening. Because as you see, HRSA has said they don't agree with three of your recommendations. And you've made recommendations. How many, when's the first time there were recommendations made about this program? I mean, what year do you think? Yeah, we made recommend, recommendations in 2011, and they still have two to, yet to be implemented. Okay, so you're, that's roughly seven years, right, depending on the time of year that they're implemented. So my point is, transparency to HRSA, to, to get more information to the federal agency, uh, hasn't worked. It's not working, right? Nothing's been changed. Is that true? Well, some things have changed, but, you know, a lot of it is we haven't had this discussion about HRSA needing, uh, whether they can issue rules and responsibilities through guidance or regulation. Right. Their, their belief is that they need regulation on the two open recommendations that we currently have that they need regulation versus guidance. Okay, and let, me, and let me guess, they're blaming it on Congress saying that we need to do a legislative fix. This is a classic agency um, approach where 
when they, they're not acting on recommendations from you or others that they hide behind the, the le, quote unquote legislative fix or they can't improve things. So my major push is this. In healthcare in general, not on, only in 340B, the only way that we're gonna get healthcare costs down and ensure all of our citizens is if everyone in this industry is completely open and transparent to the people that I represent and to the people of, of America. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.